Hello and welcome to the Cobus Integra 400 Plus. Today we're going to take a look inside of the machine to look at the mechanical workflow of what happens when you put a patient sample on board. If you take a look under the hood, you can see that there are a lot of components that will all work together simultaneously to give you a patient result. To start with, you will need your patient sample. You can either load it into the computer and allocate it a spot within the rack, or your patient can have a barcode. This barcode contains the patient's name, their date of birth, and the tests that are required from the machine. The Integra is clever in the fact that it has a barcode scanner, which can scan the rack, patient samples, and reagents. Now that our patient sample has been loaded onto the machine, we have to load on our reagent. So today we are using albumin as an example. Our cartridges all have a barcode on the back of it, which tells us how much patient sample is required for that test, how much reagent is required, and how long incubation needs to be. This is all read by the Integra. The Integra is equipped with two probes. They have liquid level sensors. These probes will come over to the patient sample, and they will suck up some patient sample, however much is required for the test, and then they will move over and they will take some reagent. When they've done this, they will move back over to this end of the machine and to the sample in and out. Simultaneously down this end of the machine, the Integra is moving a cuvette into this patient sample carousel where the reaction will occur. This is very small and is also clear so that light beams can pass through it. The cuvettes are kept in the cuvette reservoir. From here, the cuvettes will go down the cuvette feeder channel into the cuvette spiral feeder. They will vibrate all the way around and down the cuvette slide, as you can see in the video. The workstation in and out here is like an arm. It will push the cuvettes from the cuvette slide into the temperature controlled sample carousel. The cuvettes sit around the outside of the sample carousel, which is temperature controlled at 37 degrees to mimic the body's temperature. When the empty cuvette has slid down the slide and is pushed in, the carousel will rotate and push the empty cuvette into the sample in. With a probe that has taken the patient sample and the reagent will dispense into. Afterwards, the cuvette is slid back into the carousel rotated slightly and pushed into a vortex, which will mix the patient sample and the reagent together. After vortexing, the cuvette will return to the carousel for incubation. Each test requires a different length for incubation, which is determined by the company that provides the reagent. The cuvette will then rotate in front of the UV visible lamp, which will send a light beam through the cuvette into the optics, which will detect either the color change or the turbidity. This process is very similar to what you do in the laboratory with your manual assays. Uh, it's just on a smaller scale and is automated. This is very similar to your uh, colorimetric and turbidimetry tests on the spectrophotometer. Uh, not only do we have a lamp, but we also have a fluorescence detector, which is used for therapeutic drug monitoring, um, but we don't use those in Curtin University. Once the optics have a result, they will send it through to the software where you will see it visually on the computer. The cuvettes will rotate around to the sample in where the probes will suck out all of the waste. Uh, the cuvette will go back into the carousel, rotate around again, and with the workstation in and out, an arm will pull it out and put the cuvette in the rubbish. Here we can see the arm, the workstation in and out that pulls and pushes the cuvettes. The waste cuvettes will then drop down into the waste container. The probes will move over to the waste station and eject all of the leftovers from the cuvette and will wash themselves. The waste is connected to a waste container underneath the machine. General assays are performed this way on the machine with a reagent cartridge and cuvettes. However, there is the exception of potassium chloride and sodium, which is run on an ISE. ISE stands for Ion Selective Electrode, and this module works independently to the rest of the Integra. The probe will pick up the patient sample again 
and move directly over to the ISE where it will inject it into the ISE tower. The patient sample will move from the ISE tower through the tubing, through to the electrodes and pass through potassium, chloride and sodium. Each electrode has a membrane and when touching the patient sample will detect ion exchange and a change in charge. When the patient sample runs through all of these, it will flow through the tubing and directly out through the waste. Some other important components to an Integra or any biochemistry autoanalyzer is a cleaner and an internal water reservoir. These help to flush and prime the tubing and probes. We also have dosage and wash pipettes. This causes pressurization in our probes and allows for the suction of the desired amount of reagent or sample. A quick recap of how the machine works. A probe will suck up patient sample and reagent sent over to the carousel where hopefully a cuvette is waiting and the reagent and sample will be mixed together in a vortex inserted back into the carousel for incubation. The optics will detect a value from the UV lamp and when this is complete the cuvette is booted into the waste. The ISC is its own independent module to detect potassium chloride and sodium. This has just been a quick overview of the workflow of a Cobus Roche Integra 400 Plus. Um, it is a little bit older than what you would find out in industry, but it has the same general mechanical workflow as any automated chemistry machine. Hopefully you will see a few similar ones out in your workplace or on placement.